<laughs> okay, and, and, and another thing, folks, uh, about the EMG pickups, uh, if you if you happen to be watching this uh, this episode of Detroit Bass Players in the Basement, even though he's from San Francisco, but he loved Detroit Bass Players. He was here hanging out with the, the people, the, yeah. Detroit Bass Players. He played with Detroit Bass Players. I mean, why are you here, man? What well, what brings you to Detroit? Tell us what's going on with well, that. First one was is your show. My show? Well Me and Reggie show? That's right. The bass minute. So you you actually watched some episodes of this prior to coming? Before I, yes, before the before uh Detroit Bass Day. Oh I am I am so folks, I, I am so honored. You know I don't put the camera on my You know, you know I don't do selfies, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, man, That's for so true. for uh, <clears throat> watching these episodes, folks. No, Check them out. No, they have so that's what, yeah, that's, that's just watching uh, Detroit bass players in our basement. Yes. Okay, that's one reason. And, what else will bring, well, bring and you? Then, um, I saw Detroit bass day, and I saw all the pictures of the people that you were know, standing in front of the Motown, uh -huh. and I went. And then I saw the the players, the people, men, women, all creeds coming together, just playing music. And mm -hmm. the thing that we had in common, or you showed that had in common, were people were people, and they were playing. Mm -hmm. So it was the passion and art and soul and love for what we have in common, which is music, but then our instrument. So that's what got me. And I went, man, that's that's real. That's people. That's that's what you know. That's where I'm coming from. That's awesome. So that that's what it was. So, um, short of the story, Renee Santiago called me up. Another Detroit bass player who's not is living. Is he living in Detroit at the time? No, uh, he's, he's in, in Kalamazoo. He's in Kalamazoo. I think. Okay, same yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. That's Detroit. He's, yeah, as and, far as I'm concerned. And he got a hold of me, and, and he goes, "No, you ought to come." I said, "Man, I'd love to." And then all of a sudden. Uh, I got a hold of Craig, which led me to Reginald, mm -hmm. and then I started, because I started going, okay, well, how do I get this together? And then I went to EMG and I said, Detroit Bass Day. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. let's go, you know what I mean? Because that's where the people are, and it'd be fun, you know what I mean? And then I saw Detroit Bass Day, not just any day, it was fun oh. day. This looks like a large. I'm not sure, though. He's flashing the DBP shirt. I gotta give him something. <laughs> Everybody say hi to DPD. DPD! Oh, oh Brandon! Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm so good time. Yeah. 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 If you want to get your chance, yeah. Yeah. one for five, yeah. five for 20. And we also thank you today for this wonderful day and bringing us all together and creating this wonderful community of people who just want to love on one another. In your son's precious name, Lord. Amen. But you know what, it's a funny thing, it's really strange. When I first got hired by John McLaughlin, yes, well that's his real name. Back then we called him Maharishi, Maharishi because that was his spiritual name. So one more time, coming to the mic, we have Mr. John Lee. Thank you, thank you very much everybody. It is incredible to be back here in United Sound. And back in the old neighborhood where I used to hang out when I went to Wayne State University, I have the distinction of being the very first ever graduate of the Jazz Studies program at Wayne State University. We used to have classes in United Sound right in this very room. So it was great to be back and it's great to be celebrating bass in Detroit. Bobby Bagel! And 
I came here, it was the F word. It was funky. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, right, right. <laughs> you know, and so that that was a celebration. So I've had a great time here for two days, and and this was one of the stops that I've won. This was one of the main reasons why I came with the Bay State, and this is why I'm here. Okay, well, we got one question. When did you start dancing as you play? Because I know oh. even while sitting down, you're, you're still dancing. Oh, because that's part of the time of music. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm out of time or something, that's how I get it to go. It, it's just like putting spin on the ball on a cue ball. <laughs> Backspin, right? It's like, hey. It gets that extra, you know. It's like, oh, la, la, la. No, man, it's like, you know, that kind of way. Right, you know. Yeah, it's like, it ain't pretty, it's, I didn't say I could dance. Yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. <laughs> now, now uh, speaking of uh, Soul Train, you actually, uh, have you got to perform on any of these TV shows? I, I, yeah. For some reason, I think I, I saw you on TV back way back a long time ago. Did, that was the, did a, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What, what, what shows have you, what you done? Well, I was on Soul Train and Don Cornelius said, and what is your name and what is your son? I said, Bobby. Sagittarius. <laughs> well, who is you playing? <laughs> well, you laughing too. You see what I mean? It was funny. Exactly. It's, and when I did it, uh, well, I played with uh, Ronnie Laws Ooh. on Soul Train, and I did uh, Nardo Michael Walden playing with Mark. And um, it was funny because after I played with Ronnie Laws on Soul Train, all my friends from high school said, "Look, Bobby's over. Vega's over." And they called me up on the ball money. Mm, right. <laughs> and I was broken and I don't know what, but anyway. <laughs> okay. And, and then somebody just heard you playing that little set right there. Uh, you use the pick. What kind of strings do you use? Oh, um, these are nickel round wound Diodario. And on the jazz bass, I'm using 45, 65, 85, 105 nickel. Mm -hmm. On my P basses, if I'm using a P, it's 45, 65, 80, 100. Okay. Yeah. Um, or stainless, it depends what you want. Uh, why do you still play a four string when they have like 60 strings now? <laughs> <laughs> because if I went to a five or a six, if I played my four strings, they would feel like a broom. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of the music that I grew up in, how I learned how to play, is on a four. So what I do is I. I I can manipulate a four string bass. Okay. And if I go on a five or a six, you know what, I, I, I will definitely slow down. I use them on recordings and this and that. But as far as if you want to, you know, or any of that, you want to start doing snatching the pebble or whatever you want, walking on rice paper, put me on a four. That's, and that's, that's awesome. what I can actually manipulate. But a six and a five. Plus, and I know you know this, when, people, when the five strings first came out, I knew who was playing five strings because they all had bowling things on their wrists because they were blowing their wrists out because they were trying to approach it like a fender bass. They were hitting it hard and they were hurting their wrists. Uh -huh. So a five and a six, they're great instruments and they sound great and, and there's different music in them, but they take different muscle power now too. You know That's why there's preamps in the, in the basses, right? So you have to play them as hard and that's how you're achieving other tones because if you play them as hard as you play a fender bass, that's what we grew up on. Uh, you would hurt yourself, I think. Yeah, you, you, get, you get the carpal tunnel and all of that, arthritis and stuff. Yeah, and, and pop a joint out of, you know. Yeah, I mean, it used to be different back then. Like, um, I, I don't want to get into no, it, but, but uh, it was like they used to want to make you play certain In ways. Position. Yeah, and, and then come to find out that you just killing yourself slowly. Yeah. It's like smoking cigarettes. You know. And, and come to find out, you know what I mean? Come to find out, you can just play as long as the ear mm -hmm. and the body is pleased. It don't matter. None, none of the other stuff actually matters. You know? Well, that and that's why it's hard now. But on, nowadays, what I I tell people, you can. There are no rules. There are some rules. It depends who you, who's your teacher. But I learned, it, and there wasn't any rules. I'm all out of position. I'm not proud of it and saying that's the right way. But that's how I get it done. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's for everybody. You know, any way that you can get it done. 
then go ahead and do it. Right. And, and whoever your mentor or your teacher is helping you, then please, you know, you listen to them, and that's you know, because that's your choice. You have a decision, and you, you know, if that's what you're doing, please do that. Thank <laughs> you.